I'm here with Dan Tisch, the president of Argyle Communications in Toronto. Dan, thanks for sitting down with me. Pleasure. Now, you're the president of Argyle. Uh, Argyle's a well-established name uh, in uh, the Canadian public relations market. Um, how did you end up being the president of, uh, of Argyle? What, uh, what career path did you pursue? Well, it's, it's a great example, I think, of a, of a PR path that's a little bit atypical. Um, in the first uh, eight years of my career, I was in, the, in public service, in effect. I worked for two cabinet ministers in Ottawa. Learned a lot uh, from watching some people perform really well. Also learned a lot from, from, from many mistakes, including my own, made with media. Uh, and for the last 13 years, I've been in the agency world. I was part of the, uh, an early part of the management team at Enveronics Communications and was very proud to play a role in that firm's fairly dramatic growth. Uh, and then in 2002, I became a partner in Argyle and uh, became president in 2003. Okay, and you've been in that position now for five years. Yeah, just uh, time just goes by years. quickly. And uh, tell us a bit about Argyle. What uh, sure. what makes Argyle special? Well, I guess uh, what strikes me that's kind of exciting is that not only are we one of the oldest PR brands in Canada still around, almost thirty years now, we're we're also one of the fastest growing, which is kind of a nice combination. And so, when it's interesting that a lot of our very bright young people weren't even alive in 1979, or if they were, they have no memories of it. Um, but there's just something about being associated with a firm with this level of longevity that I think makes you think about communications and client relationships in longer in, as, as a long-term process. Uh, and I think that's, uh, that's kind of special. And I guess the other thing I'd say is that while we're not anywhere near the biggest firm in, in Toronto or in Canada, and have no aspirations to be the biggest, um, we're proud that our peers tell us that we're among the best uh, in that uh, we take um, uh, submissions and award programs very seriously. We see it as a way to benchmark ourselves against the industry and uh, are proud that uh, we're consistently among Canada's more award-winning firms. And your wall of uh, awards here would suggest you've done pretty well in that. What are the areas of specialization that you, uh, that you focus on? Sure. Um, we, a lot of our work is in consumer marketing, working with, uh, with very large multinational organizations, uh, representing them here in Canada, organizations like Nestle and uh, um, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, to give you a couple of examples. Uh, we also do a lot of corporate communications work, some work for some public companies, uh, a little bit of consumer health work. Uh, we're one of the Ontario government's, uh, members of the Ontario government's PR agency pool. And finally, a little bit of technology work. So it's. Uh, it's a very diversified business, but we've tried very consciously to focus on sectors of the economy that have a lot of growth and a lot of promise. Always a good place to be where the growth is, especially at a time like this. Uh, as we sit here, uh, there's all kinds of news stories about uh, the recession in the United States. Um, how are you dealing with planning for the recession here? I think there's a real, there's no question it's a challenge, I think, for Canadians, but it's also, I think, an opportunity, particularly for the PR industry because there's no question that marketers and corporate communicators are going to be looking for services and, um, and services that have value. And so I think there's a real opportunity to demonstrate that public relations offers greater value than other forms of, uh, of communications, other, other options for their marketing dollar. And I think also public relations is the message we have to deliver as an industry is something that you need in good times and bad, perhaps even more so when times are uh, uh, are a little bit more difficult. So, you know, I think there's, there is challenge, but there's a lot of opportunity out there. Yeah, and P PR, uh, as uh, marketing and communications budgets are being squeezed, uh, do you assemble some facts for clients to show the relative, relative efficacy, dollar per dollar, of public sure. relations? Measurement is, a, 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 as, as you know, uh, it's a huge uh, challenge in our industry now. I mean, it's been a challenge certainly as long as I've been involved in PR and considerably longer. But I think as a profession in Canada, we're making great strides. Uh, certainly the emergence of MRP as a measurement standard uh, and you know, giving us the ability to not just standardize readership, listenership, viewership numbers, but also to look at cost per contact and cost per impression. I think those are real advances that we can be very proud of as an industry. For sure, and they're unique to Canada. Media relations rating points is what MRP stands for, for people who are watching this from outside right. of the country. I, I, I always try, I, <laughs> I have a rule always to explain acronyms, and thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> so the last question, clearly uh, you've had a pretty successful PR career. 
Uh, there are uh, uh, there's a graduating class coming out of school this year. A lot of young people who'd like to get into the business. Any piece of advice that you offer to young people when they come seeking a job with uh, Argyle? Well, I guess the first thing I'd say is um, what a lot of people, as you said, are already doing, and that's get an academic grounding in PR. It, it really is a differentiator. It shows that you know you know the basics, even if you haven't been able to put them into practice. Secondly, whatever business you aspire to work in, know that business inside out. There's no point really in practicing public relations if it doesn't serve a business or an organizational goal of some sort. And finally, I guess it's it's about attitude. Um, you know, we're in the consulting business, and the very nature of a consultant is you've got to be versatile, you've got to be adaptable, you've got to be uh, receptive to change. And it really is true that in the early stages of one's career, attitude is just as important as aptitude, if not more so. Dan, thanks very much. Pleasure.